What's going on, my friend? It's Jeff Newbert from ChasingStrength.com. And in today's video, we are going to answer the question posed by one of my readers, one of my newsletter readers, does kettlebell cardio interfere with muscle gain? The follow-up question is, and how would you know? All right, so let's get into it. I got this question from Pam over the weekend, which I thought I'd pass along to you because it does pose an interesting question. I'm going to flash it up here on the screen or we'll flash it up here on the screen. Pam says, my question is, I've been hearing about how cardio isn't the best for building muscle because one's body will adapt to the cardio and pare down muscle in the adaptation process along with other adaptations. However, I'm torn because when I do kettlebells, I feel like I'm doing cardio as well. For instance, with the wolf. So here was my response that I emailed back to her. It's a great question. And it depends on the type of cardio. Training for a marathon and lifting maximum weights are, are at odds with each other and the body's resources. It used to be thought that traditional steady state cardio interfered with muscle building. That's not exactly true. Too much of it does. So one of the benefits of kettlebell training is that we can train the heart for health and build muscle, i.e., and, and or, excuse me, get stronger, quote, at the same time, there's the air quotes, right? Using appropriate loading parameters like the finishers in Kettlebell Burn 2.0 or the various programs like the Wolf in MKM, which is more kettlebell muscle. The cardiovascular adaptation is going to be different based on the activity, but with both Burn and the MKM programs, people find their cardio better while having grown some muscle. All right. So that's what I told Pam. And then Pam sent me up a very astute follow-up question. Okay. She goes, in regards, she asks, in regards to too much cardio, how would one decipher that? So let me answer that by telling you a story. A couple of years ago, a client of mine and I did a challenge, like one of those challenges, one of those 30-day challenges. We did it together because, well, he likes challenges. And it was very simple. Swings and push-ups every day. We're going to do 100 swings and 100 push-ups every day, five to six days a week. Now, me being kind of the knucklehead that I am is, of course, if you if you tell me we're going to do a challenge and we're going to do five to six days a week, I'm automatically going to embrace six days a week because that's just the way I am. I, I just kind of go all out like that. So that's what I did. Well, what were the results, Jeff? I mean, you must have gotten ripped and shredded and well, you must have been super muscular and jacked and your conditioning must have been through the roof. I mean, 100 swings a day, right? That's 600 swings a week and 600 push-ups a week. And, uh, you know, based on those swing challenges I've read about, I mean, your results must have been awesome, right? You know, you're probably expecting me to say that body fat melted off me like butter on a hot stove, right? Or butter in a pan on a hot stove. But that was not the case, shockingly, okay? In fact, the exact opposite was true. That's right. I actually lost muscle and gained body fat. Sounds sounds crazy, sounds strange, right? So why did it happen, right? Well, it's it's not too dissimilar to folks who start running marathons and pack on the pounds or kilos as a result. The simple fact of the matter is I overrode my body with my mind, okay? So my body literally could not keep up with how hard my mind was pushing it. So it simply produced too much cortisol in response to the too much stress that is it was experiencing, which then created a negative hormonal cascade, which fatted me up, all right? So that's how you know if you're doing too much cardio, too much of anything, really. And that's exactly why most of my programs that I write are three days a week, not five or six. Now, here's a little side note. I do have some programs that are four, five, even six days a week. But here's the big but. They use abbreviated training durations, okay? So 15 to 30 minutes. And they usually, but not always, include some kind of active recovery strategy with them. Okay, so that's the side note. And this too is why I'm also such a big fan of auto regulation, right? Versus pre prescribed sets in reps. Okay, I'm not a big five by five fan with two minutes of rest. I'm a big, here's a range, here are the reps, do as many sets as you can in whatever time you can, using as much rest as you need, following some specific guidelines. All right, <laughs> that's, that's also why you may get frustrated if you send me an email asking me, hey man, uh, so-and-so are doing this number of sets on the giant. How many sets should I be doing? And is the number of sets that I did, is that good? Well, <clears throat> I don't know, right? Because auto regulation dictates that that is specific to you and your current training history, right? Your injury history and what you've got going on in your life, including stress levels. All right. So again, remember this 
this should be a maxim. I think this we're going to call this a maxim, right? It's not how much work you can do. It's how much work you can recover from so that you get the results that you're after. Let me say that again, just in case you missed it or you're tempted to dismiss it because it doesn't fit in with what you think you should be doing, All right? It's not how much work you can do. It's how much work you can recover from so that you get the results you're after, okay? So at the end of the day, for best results, one, you need to train three days a week. Two, train between 15 and 45 minutes each session, depending on what you can handle. Three, bake your cardio into your strength muscle building programming using auto-regulation in physiologically sound work to rest ratios, okay? I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'll probably explain it in some other video. Uh, number four, make sure you walk and do mobility work on your off days. There's those air quotes again. All right. And number five, and finally, if you're feeling stressed, you're feeling stressed out, right? If life, the walls are closing in on you, okay? Go out of your way to increase your active recovery measures, right? So that means walking, diaphragmatic breathing, some hot, cold contrast showers, sauna, whirlpool, uh, hot steam room, funny movies, that sort of thing. Okay. That will, that will just take the edge off. It'll, it'll work wonders for you. All right. So in case you're wondering, well, well, how do I, how do I bake in cardio into my kettlebell workouts without overtraining? Well, I'll leave some links down in the description below. Okay. We'll put uh, a link in there for some beginner and intermediate protocols. Uh, we'll put some links in there for some auto-regulated plans. Uh, and if you are the kind of person who loves or feels like they absolutely need to train on a daily basis, you know, five, six days a week, then I'll even leave a link for a program uh, in the description below that'll help you do that. Okay. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did click the like button, if you haven't already subscribed, if you found it really helpful, do everybody a favor, share it with a couple of your friends. It'll help us grow this channel and get the word out about proper, effective kettlebell training that produces results. For guys and gals, am I allowed to say gals anymore? I don't know. Is that politically incorrect? For men and women over a certain age. All right. Until next time, my friend, stay strong.